As far as iconic video game items go, the Pokeball has gotta be at the top of that list. I mean, they're simple, unique, they're just plain cool, and boy oh boy do they not make any sense. Like, sure, it's just a way to explain how a small child can carry around six 900 pound trees, but where do those 900 pound trees go? Are they shrunk down to fit within the Pokeball? And if so, are the Pokeballs still 900 pounds? Are they somehow converted into pure energy? Uh, then how much energy would a 900 pound tree become? Game Freak? No, I don't care that this is a world created by a magical deer. What are the physics of this Game Freak? The people want to know- Oh wait, this is a science channel. I guess I could just figure it out myself. This is the physics of the Pokeball. Richard, hit that intro. Now, unfortunately, we never get a great explanation of how the Pokeballs work in the games. Or any explanation, really. In the manga, it's implied that the Pokeball is physically reducing a Pokemon's size, shrinking them down until they can fit within the ball. A ball that you proceed to toss in your bag and then hurl at the ground when you want to send it out. However, it's important to note that simply reducing a Pokemon's physical size won't necessarily make it any easier to transport. For you see, there's a pesky little thing called physics that gets in the way. Namely, the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter cannot be created or destroyed. Sure, you could theoretically pack all the matter within that 400 kilogram tree into a space the size of a Pokeball. But at the end of the day, you're still gonna have 400 kilograms of matter, unless you start busting out the axe. However, in the show, Pokeballs seem to work a little differently. Rather than shrinking a Pokemon down, they're converted into some generic form of white glowing energy, which is then stored within the ball. Now, in the most generic sense, it is possible to convert mass into energy and vice versa. You're going to start running into issues if you're planning on retaining any information about the original mass and not just sending out a heap of particles, but ignoring that, you need a lot of energy to create even the least massive Pokemon out there. So either way you look at it, a Pokeball is either going to be incredibly dense or contain a frankly dangerous amount of energy depending on what Pokemon is inside. So I think the next step here is pretty obvious. We should find the density and equivalent energy for every single Pokemon within a Pokeball and use that information to poke fun at the logic of a fictitious world that ultimately doesn't matter. A chip tied special. Luckily, this is actually way easier than it sounds. Let's start with density. Density is a measure of how much matter is in a given amount of space, and can be found by dividing an object's mass by its volume. If you want a trick to remember this formula, just remember that density is pretty boring. And you know what else is boring? The DMV. Or, you know, you could just look it up, I guess. We live in the age of information. You don't really gotta memorize stuff anymore. So, if we want to find the density of a Pokemon inside a Pokeball, we need mass and volume. Mass is pretty simple. We can just grab it from the Pokedex. Even though I'm pretty sure the professors are just making half these up because they make literally no sense. For today, we'll be ignoring the mass of the Pokeball itself. We have no idea of what these things are made of, so it's hard to estimate, and in most cases, it'll be pretty negligible compared to the mass of the Pokemon inside. For volume, the thing we're trying to find is the density of a Pokemon compressed down to the size of a Pokeball. So our volume will simply be the volume of the Pokeball. 
We can find this by using the formula for the volume of a sphere, 4 thirds times pi times the radius of the sphere cubed. Since the radius is simply equal to half the diameter, we just need to know how big a Pokeball is, which it turns out is not so easily answered. Not only do we never get any canon dimensions for a Pokeball in the games, but they also seem to change from medium to medium. In the show, a Pokeball is typically shown as being larger in diameter than the palm of your hand, a bit bigger than a baseball, but they can also be shrunk down to be easily stored on a belt. Since we know that the mass of the Pokemon inside has to remain constant, this would make it even more dense. To complicate things further, in the games, Pokeballs seem to be somewhere between these two with their own density altogether. I'm inclined to just take the game's size as canon, but since the growing balls from the show are so iconic, it wouldn't feel right to just ignore them. So to cover all my bases, Let's just look at all three. In the show, we never get a concrete measurement for the size of a Pokeball, and in fact, they seem to vary slightly from shot to shot, but we can compare a Pokeball to the size of Ash's hand to get a pretty good estimate. The average width of the palm of a 10-year-old boy is around 3 inches. Using some pixel measurements and proportions, we can find that the large Pokeball has a diameter of roughly 4.05 inches or 10.28 centimeters, while the small one has a diameter of 1.77 inches or 4.5 centimeters. In the games, it's a little harder to get a clean measurement, but apparently there's an interview with Pokemon's chief creative fellow, Junichi Masuda, where he confirms that the Pokeball Plus controller is the canon size for Pokeballs in the game. Now, I couldn't find this interview anywhere myself, but comparing the Pokeballs in the game to this controller, it does seem to be at least roughly correct. The Pokeball Plus has a diameter of 1.89 inches, or 4.8 centimeters. Now we can simply put those three measurements into our sphere volume formula and get the volume for each of these three Pokeball sizes. Again, we're not going to account for the thickness of the actual ball itself. We don't have any measurements for the small anime ball or the ball from the game, so it wouldn't be an entirely fair comparison. So we're just going to pretend that the thickness of the actual ball is negligible. So with that, we have our mass and our volume. Now all we have to do is divide one by the other for each Pokemon, and we can find the density for each of these three Pokeball sizes for every single Pokemon. Before I reveal those results though, let's take a look at the other possibility. The Pokemon are not shrunk down, but converted into pure energy. While this may seem like pure science fiction, it actually is, at least in theory, possible. Not easy, but possible. Now, the astute among you might be saying, hang on, wasn't the previous shrinking explanation based on the assumption that matter cannot be created or destroyed? Converting it into pure energy sure seems like it's pretty well and truly destroyed. Well. For most of human history, scientists probably would have agreed with you. That is, until Albert Einstein came around and figured out that mass and energy aren't as different as we once thought. It turns out that, in certain extreme cases like nuclear fission and fusion and objects moving at the speed of light, it is possible to convert matter into pure energy and the amount of energy you can obtain from a given amount of mass can be found using the world famous equation E equals mc squared. Now, I'd hazard a guess that most of you know what this equation is, but not really what it means. And don't worry, until yesterday, I was in the same boat. Well, as it turns out, while E equals mc squared is the most famous form of this equation today, Einstein originally presented it differently, as m equals e over c squared. Doesn't have the same ring to it, but it's arguably a better way of representing what this equation is actually for. We often think of mass as the amount of matter in an object. 
basically how much stuff there is. But as it turns out, kinetic energy also has some mass to it. And that mass is equal to the amount of kinetic energy divided by the speed of light squared. For reference, the speed of light is 29,792,458 meters per second. So dividing really any amount of energy by a number that big squared is going to be a tiny amount of mass. So tiny that in nearly every practical application, you can totally ignore it. But this formula is useful if you're trying to say, figure out how much energy will be produced by a given amount of mass in a nuclear reaction. Now, in order to use this equation to find out how much energy a Pokemon would be converted into, we do need to make some big assumptions. For starters, this conversion has to be perfectly efficient. In something like a nuclear power plant, only 0.1% of the fuel is converted into energy. In our case though, we need every bit of matter to be converted, unless you want your executor to come out missing a few coconuts. We also need to assume that Pokeballs are capable of storing this energy indefinitely and in a form that can be turned back into matter when needed, which is a whole nother can of worms that we don't have time to get into. But if we do that, then we can simply plug each Pokemon's mass in here and find the equivalent amount of energy measured in joules that the Pokeball would have to store. And so, after all that, I was able to easily calculate the density and energy for every single Pokemon. I've included the spreadsheet with all the data in the description down below if you're curious, but I'll go through some of the more interesting results here. Starting at the very bottom, Ghastly, Haunter, Flabebe, Cosmog, Kartana, and Gimigool are all tied for the lightest Pokemon at just 0.2 pounds or 0.1 kilograms. That means that a full-size Pokemon from the anime with one of these in it would have a density of 10 pounds per cubic foot or 160.19 kilograms per meter cube. For reference, that's roughly the same density as styrofoam. All things considered, not that dense. In the games, that number jumps up to 1,570.44 kilograms per meter cubed, the same as holding a ball of sand, and the small ball from the anime would have a density of 1,906 kilograms per meter cubed, which is about the same as a relatively porous concrete. So, as you can see, decreasing the size of the Pokeball increases the density by a lot. But what about energy? Well, according to Einstein's equation, in a perfectly efficient conversion, a ghastly would turn into 8 quadrillion, 978 trillion, 550 billion joules of kinetic energy. Now, that's an insanely high number, but it's important to note that one joule is not that much. To put this in perspective, that's only the equivalent of 2.15 megatons of TNT, or nearly 60 times more powerful than the two atomic bombs dropped in World War II combined. Oh wait, did I say only? Yeah, remember when I said that in a real nuclear reaction, only about 0.1% of the fuel is converted into energy. It turns out that when you start converting all that fuel into pure kinetic energy, those numbers get pretty big really fast. To put this in perspective, the strongest nuclear weapon ever tested was the Tsar bomb, which packed 50 megatons of TNT's worth of a punch or, in Pokemon terms, roughly the equivalent of one Talo, which only weighs 5.1 pounds, or 2.3 kilograms. And we're sure about giving these things out to 10-year-olds? 
The next Pokemon I want to look at is Charizard. First, because it's the coolest Kanto starter, it's not basic if it's true. But more importantly, at 199.5 pounds or 90.5 kilograms, Charizard weighs roughly the same as a man aged 18 to 24, which according to my YouTube analytics, most of you are. So this is basically the equivalent of putting you inside a Pokeball. The largest Pokeball would have a density of 159,784 kilograms per meter cubed, which is approximately the same density as the core of our sun. And that's the largest ball. The smallest one has a density of 1,902,196 kilograms per meter cubed, and now we're leaving the realms of things I can easily compare these numbers to. Uh, let's see, it's like if you compressed the moon down to a ball the size of Pennsylvania. And while we're at it, have all you 18 to 24 year old males out there ever wondered how many atomic bombs worth of energy you could be converted into? Well, have no fear, for the truth is here. At the equivalent of 1,946 megatons of TNT, a Pokeball containing a creature of your mass would be the equivalent of holding 39 Tsar bombs in the palm of your hand. But let's stop messing around. I know what you're all waiting for. The two most massive Pokemon in the game are Celesteela, the 30 foot tall sentient rocket, and Cosmoem, the 4 inch space cocoon, which both weigh in at 2,204.4 pounds or 999.9 kilograms. Pokemon's a weird game. Also, not sure how accurate these measurements are. Kinda seems like you just maxed out your scale there, Kukui. Putting that much mass into the tiniest anime Pokeball would result in a density of 21,018,560.36 kilograms per meter cubed, which is the equivalent of condensing the entire Earth down to a ball roughly the size of Texas, or the entirety of the United Kingdom if you're European and have no concept for these state-based comparisons. Look, I've been using kilograms and try my best. And, of course, if you shove that big bamboo rocket man or tiny cloud of space dust into a Pokeball, it would turn into 90 quintillion joules of energy, the equivalent of 21,499 megatons of TNT, or roughly enough energy to power the entire world for one day. So, what have we learned today? Well, if the Pokemon games are to be believed, then we have scientifically proven that it is completely safe for kids to walk around with balls several orders of magnitude more dense than the core of our sun, storing 50 times more energy than the combined destructive power of every nuclear weapon that has ever been detonated in human history. That's the Pokeball for you, folks. I mean, really? These things are a miracle of engineering when you think about it. I mean, I don't think I ever gave those sill folks enough credit finding a way to safely store that much. Oh, shoot! And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby.